Okay, we've got some breaking news to bring you. And Gary Cahill has announced his retirement at the age of 36. Cahill's 18-year professional career began at Aston Villa. The defender won 61 caps for England, went to two World Cups, two European Championships. He spent the majority of his career at Chelsea, where he won nine major trophies, including the Premier League twice and the 2012 Champions League. In an exclusive interview with Sky Sports News, uh, Cahill sat down with our senior reporter Tim Thornton to speak about his career, his old clubs, the managers he's played for and what he'll do next. Gary, you've had an incredibly successful career. Has this been a tough decision for you? Obviously, it's been a tough decision in some aspects, but I think I just knew. I think the journey's got to come to end um, at some stage. And I just got a feeling that like now is the right time. Did you have offers to carry on playing? Yeah, I did. Um, I never felt like I was in a rush to announce it. At the end of the season, obviously, because it was such a huge decision, I wanted to make sure 100% that's the, the path I wanted to take. I did have options. Um, could have played in the Premier League with one side, uh, a couple of options in the Championship, which was flattering, obviously, to still get the offers at the moment, as well as my career. You know, the dynamics have changed a little bit. The kids are settled at school. You know, it meant moving again. We could have carried on playing. And if I still had that hunger and desire to do that, we would have done that. Let's take you back to your early days at Bolton. How big an achievement was it for you to break into the England squad when you were at Bolton? It was huge because, as you know, at that particular time, a lot of the England squad was, was in top teams. And I don't mean that just for Bolton, but obviously your elite teams in the Premier League, they took the chance, if you like, to buy me, put me in the team, play me week in, week out, and give me that platform to go on and learn, make mistakes, grow as a player, grow as a man. I appreciate Bolton very much for that. You remembered most for your seven years at Chelsea. What was it like to be part of such a successful period at the club? To be involved in such a successful team was uh, was basically the pinnacle of obviously play, your playing days and, and what you strive for when you first start playing to try and get to the top and try and be involved in a team that can challenge and compete for titles and trophies and to be in a changing room with such big figures um, that was at Chelsea at the time. You know the list the list is huge. Players that have gone on and achieved such great things in the game experience international players and all these players that you can kind of learn from as well coming in as a young player was it was amazing for me and you had such longevity at the very top level was that down to your professionalism the yeah I think it's down to a number of things I think when I look at a player who's got longevity at the top they have to have so many things in the makeup they have to first of all have ability to play at the top level or you're not going to survive there you have to have the mental strength to, to deal with the pressures at a top club um, you have to be able to adapt to different managers because managers can come and go. And, and something that I'm personally proud of to be at the top for that, for that many years uh, and to play in the Premier League, you know, majority of my career. You played under some top managers at Chelsea, the likes of Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte. Can you give us an insight into how they work? What was it like to play under them? Good memories working with both. I think both very, very intense. I've said before in the past, I think it's like having one season is like having three seasons with these guys. Um, the intensity levels, what they demand in training, what they demand in the games. Different personalities, but similar in some aspects of the coaching and the detail and how they adapt to the different opposition that you play against. Hence why the, the pair of them are so, so successful. Almost 400 Premier League games, titles, FA Cups, Champions League. What have been the big standout moments for you? Well, I think there's been so many highlights. I've been blessed to have a great career um, and been successful in terms of winning uh, titles and, and cups and whatnot. So it's very tough to highlight one. I think that alongside, obviously, you've got your, your me England debut growing up as a young boy watching the Premier League. So to go on and win the Premier League was a huge moment for me. And the FA Cup, again, being an English boy watching that, to then go on and play at Wembley, such an iconic stadium, and captain a team to win and go and lift the cup as captain. At the other end of your career, then Crystal Palace and Bournemouth, were they very different experiences? Both of them was after Chelsea, for, for obvious reasons, I think, but Crystal Palace less so because we was in the Premier League, obviously, still. Um, and we're still at top level, still with, with great players. It was Roy and Ray, who I'd worked with before with England, um, two fantastic football people. 
so I thoroughly enjoyed my time there. Again, it was a, it's a fantastic football club. I had two great years there, um, and I really, really enjoyed it. And then finally, just finishing off at Bournemouth for the year, uh, the goal was obviously to go there and try and get promotion, which worked out, so uh, finished on a high. Let's talk about the best player that you played with. Best player I played with is tough because I've played with so many great players. Um, I think through natural, just natural ability, one of it has to be Eden Hazard. I think the days when I was with him at Chelsea, sometimes he was just he was unplayable at times. Toughest opponent? I have to say Messi and Ronaldo played against both of them. And these guys are just playing on different planets. What's next for you now then? Possibly going into coaching or management in the future? I honestly don't know what's next for me now. I've not made any any decisions that I think everyone's different and me personally was at the end of my career I wanted to take some time away step back from football and just enjoy watching it um, spend time with my family and I was just really conscious not to dive in or jump into something straight away um, anyone who plays football you know it's, it's, it's an amazing job we, we, we're really blessed to play the game um, at the level that we have but it's very demanding you're on a schedule of the club or the manager um, you're not on your own schedule so for me to now be able to spend time, spend Christmas this year with the family, do things that I couldn't do when I was playing, I think is important to me. I'll try and make some decisions and see what I'm going to do in the next chapter of my life after Christmas. Is that quite exciting? In some ways, yeah. I'm very much a guy who wants to look forward instead of looking back. Like I, When you finish playing football, I know full well, when I see the games now, I miss them massively. I want to be involved in, 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 in the games. So I'm not going to say that I don't miss it, but. I've had a fantastic career, it comes to an end one day and now it's the next chapter of my career life. There's other things that I can do that I'm really looking forward to. So I feel like I'm in a great place to, to finish. Hence why at the start of the conversation I said I just know it's right, it's, it's the right time for me for sure.